Hi, my name is Michael Tyberski, and I directed and co-wrote The Sound of Silence. I suppose I've always been a visual thinker, but sound is one of those areas, especially in film, that I feel like is often underutilized, not kind of given its full potential, and it really makes up so much of the, the movie-going experience. One of my first assignments in film school was essentially to tell a story just through sound. Having kind of the constraints of just being able to tell a story with sound can be really amazing because you can do so much and you can manipulate kind of the viewer in a way that's really interesting. Ladies and gentlemen, due to circumstances beyond our control, we are unable... One of, one of my favorite films is uh, Come and See from Ellen Klimov. It's, you know, World War II. I think it's, you know, probably best known for kind of its brutal naturalism. Early on in the movie, the, the main character, this young boy, he experiences kind of a big explosion and bombing and essentially goes deaf. And because we're experiencing it from his perspective, first it transitions from kind of these explosions to ringing. And then they really cut sound entirely for most of the movie. It really places you in that character's head. It shakes you as a viewer because suddenly you're just aware of all of the kind of micro sounds in the world. And then you know, Paul Thomas Anderson did that in There Will Be Blood, much to the same effect where uh, when the oiled derrick explodes, they really cut sound from the soundtrack. And then we do that in this movie. We have a character who he overhears essentially, that's his biggest discomfort. From the script stage, we knew he needed to have some sort of coping mechanism, these custom modified headset that he wears. It's a way that he can quite literally tune the city out. We have the scene where Peter goes in to visit the Rashida Jones character. He works in homes and offices are just literally out of his comfort zone. When you're in an office, you hear fax machines, copiers, the water cooler, office chat, phones ringing, the fluorescent lights buzzing. And so all of these, for Peter, are gonna be heightened. And, you know, at our first pass of the mix of that scene, it was just kind of the cliche of just like hearing all those layered on top of each other. And I got to meet Gary Reinstrom, who's this kind of legendary sound designer. And he gave me a great note, the idea that if you want to go inside a character's head, it's best to kind of lose a lot of the other sounds. So instead of taking all those and hearing all those individual sounds on top of one another, we took the most predominant ones and we pitched it to a high frequency so we could kind of understand how uncomfortable he was almost without hearing all of those other things that were making him uncomfortable. Sorry. And Gary worked on Punch Drunk Love. I think what I love about that movie is that it really meshes both sound design and score in a really unique way. I always believe that sound design and score are best when they're synonymous and you don't really know what you're hearing at one time and that they can kind of be one and the same thing. Peter Sarsgaard character kind of fashions himself in his head as this kind of conductor to a big symphony and you know, New York City in this case being the orchestra. And he has this one vantage point in the city that he goes to several times in the film and it's just kind of business as usual. He puts down his recording equipment and has this, this moment where he can kind of have an overview of everything and we start with score. Slowly evolves into the sounds of the city. And then finally transitions into this ringing. It was a great moment where our composer and sound design team were really kind of working in parallel with each other. Because this moment is about him kind of being in front of this so-called orchestra, it was about tuning up to a certain chord. So our score is tuned a certain way, and then our sound design of all of those sounds are tuned right to that part of the score. So it really kind of becomes this bed of sound. I can't stress having good onset sound enough. It'll end up saving you time and money in the edit. I think we should all be thinking about sound as much as we are thinking about image. And it's, it's easy not to, but it's so powerful. And having good sound, there's nothing better.
Martin! What are you doing? <coughs> Recording. Silence. <laughs>